Welcome to Help I'm a Pastor. My name is Gavin Enslin. And um, yep, this is episode 30 of season 4. Now, everything that I'm talking about in this session relating to church leadership is based on the G12 vision. And as I'd say every week, if you want to understand the G12 vision, like have a conceptual sort of a high-level view, an overview that you can see the big picture of how the vision hangs together, then uh, go and have a look at season 2. Um, there's about 45 episodes, about 8 to 15 minutes long each, and um, you'll get an, a, a, a great overview of the, the, the G12 vision. But uh, also to understand that um, there's a spiritual dimension to the vision, and you've got to get into the spiritual dimension, and you've got to incubate your faith. You've got to build your faith, which means you see that God wants you to reach the multitudes and you see it before you have the multitudes and everything about the G12 vision is about you seeing multiplication and the multitudes in your ministry and this is what I want to encourage you with today so if you do not understand or do not know anything about the G12 vision please go and have a look at season two and you'll get an overview but also please to, you need to understand this. this is very important you cannot do the vision without the Holy Spirit because the vision goes around the, um, the, the vision goes around the vision of God for his church. And so you cannot do that without the help of the Holy Spirit. You cannot do that without the Bible. And you cannot do that without having a personal relationship with God because the vision requires you to be a model of what it looks like to be like Jesus. That people, when they look at you, they see the character of Christ, you know, coming out in you. And so let's just pray together. Father, I just pray for every single person that is watching today, that their ministries may be blessed, that they might experience the multiplication that I know most people in ministry desire to see. And that, Lord, I pray that they would get wisdom from you so that they can see those words that are recorded in the book of Acts happen in their ministries, that every day the Lord added their number, those that were being saved. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. And that last statement in my prayer is based on Acts chapter 2, where it speaks about the fact that every day, but the last verse of Acts chapter 2, and every day the Lord added their number, those that were being saved. I want you to understand that it is possible that you could live to see the day where every day the Lord is adding to your number those that are being saved. What a blessing from God. Now, um, we spoke about the vision. <clears throat> and um, just to remind you, if you've got your own vision for the church, you've got a problem. Twofold. Number one, the Holy Spirit's not going to help you express that vision. He's not. It's, it's your vision. All right? The only vision the Holy, Spirit, the Holy Spirit's going to help you to express is the vision of Jesus. When, when the vision of Jesus is expressed, then the people will get it because the Holy Spirit will convict them of it. And so it's very, very important that whatever vision you're driving for in the church, that it's the vision of Jesus. And when it's a vision of Jesus, then in effect, Jesus becomes the senior pastor of your church. And then the second thing is that in order to fulfill that vision, you've got, to, you've got to have Jesus' strategy. Now, why do you need to have the strategy of Jesus? Because you don't have to explain it. It'll be transmitted by the power of the Holy Spirit. And the vision of Jesus will help you in your ministry to conquer the world. And I want you to understand, God wants to see the world conquered through your ministry because it is the will of God that everyone, every human being on the face of the planet, all 8 billion odd people that are on the planet today, it is the will of God that they be saved. Now, um, um, the, thing, the thing that I, that I want you to, to, to realize in terms of having the vision of Jesus and having a vision of conquest, um, the entire vision of Jesus requires a model. Requires someone that's modeling the character of Jesus. Requires someone that is modeling the strategy of Jesus. And when your people see the pastor or yourself or whoever it is that is leading the ministry model this, then you cannot change it. What is the problem if you're running a ministry with your own vision? If you're running the ministry with your own vision and it's not the vision of God, then every person in your ministry has the right to have their own vision and they have the right 
to have their own vision based on what you've done. Because if you have the right to have a vision from God, then they must also have a right to have a vision of God. And you've now legislated that within your ministry. And therefore, you never meant it. But by implication, you have legislated division within your ministry. If you yourself are submitting to the vision of God, then the people in your church will not be able to, to change it. And it's going to be very difficult for them to cause a church split. Because people will see, but wait a second, you're not doing what that guy's doing, but that guy's doing what you're not doing. So even though that guy's your leader, they're doing what you're not doing. And you'll see that a, a true leader is humble, like Jesus was. And like Jesus, when he was walking the earth, was perfectly submitted to the Father. I mean, that's clear throughout the New Testament. Jesus submitted to the Father perfectly. And therefore, if you're going to be a model of Jesus, which is what you need to be if you're a leader in a ministry, if you're going to, 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 to be a model leader and you're modeling Jesus, they've got to see that you are totally submitted to your authority, that you are totally submitted to the Bible, that you are totally submitted to the Holy Spirit. And there needs to be someone in your life that they can see a person, a human being, that is further than you in the faith that you are submitting to. Now, when that happens, people can't change it. <clears throat> because, you see, any person that gives their life to Jesus is begotten of God. God is in their DNA. And if, if, if the presence of God and the character of God is in their DNA, then here's the thing. The vision of Jesus is going to be in their DNA too. If you are running with your own vision, then you're going to have issue because your leaders are going to have their own vision too. What did the Apostle Paul say at the Corinthian church? Because there was a church full of people, full of division, full of people that had their own vision, that had their own idea, that were saying, you know, you follow Paul, I follow Paulus. And, you know, they were saying all sorts of things like that. What did Paul say to them? He said to them, you know what? You may have many people that have taught you, but I'm the one that begot you in the faith. I'm the one that begot you. I'm the one that produced the, the faith of the gospel in you. And in fact, in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 1, he says to that church, and you can go read it for yourself, imitate me, therefore, as I imitate Christ. He's telling them straight, I'm imitating Jesus. Therefore, if you imitate me and you're my disciple, automatically, because I'm a disciple of Jesus, you're going to be a disciple of Jesus too, because that's what you're going to be imitating. Now, if you don't do this, then within the G12 vision, if you go through um, you know, season two, you'll see that it's built around you having 12 disciples, the way Jesus had 12 disciples. And if you have your own vision, then each one of your 12 disciples will have their own vision. And, and if you understand the G12 vision, and, and again, go and have a look at season two, uh, if, if your 12 leaders each have 12 leaders, you've got 144 leaders under the 12. So... If you haven't seen season two, if you haven't heard of G12, you can start seeing the power of the vision. In the second level, you have 144 leaders which are submitting to your 12 who are submitting to you. But if you've got your own vision and not the vision of Jesus, then everyone in your 144 is going to have their own vision. And so I want to say to you that Jesus' strategy needs to become your strategy. And what is Jesus' strategy? Well, what did Jesus do when he was doing the ministry and walking the earth. And I'm telling you now, if you're going to imitate Jesus, you can do a lot worse things in your life than imitate Jesus. What did Jesus do when he walked the earth? The first thing he did is he selected his 12. He selected 12 disciples. And then for three and a half years, most of the time in his ministry, he spent forming the 12. I mean, sometimes he spoke to crowds. And, and, and one day this crowd would be here, the next day this crowd would be here. Then the crowd wanted to stone him, and you know, all of this sort of thing. So the crowds would come and the crowds would go, but the 12 went wherever Jesus went. And for three and a half years, he was forming his 12. And then wh why did he form his 12? Well, there was a purpose that once he had died, once he'd been resurrected, once he ascended into heaven, he gave them the Holy Spirit on the day of Pentecost. And then he sent them out. And he sent them out with a mandate, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them always to obey everything I've commanded you, along with you always 
to the very end of the age. What is the commands of Jesus? Jesus said in Matthew 22, Love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, and mind. So love God and love your neighbor. The second is like it. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. Which means love God and love people. And how do you love people? By going out and making disciples. It's a very simple strategy. It's very easy to understand. It's very practical for you to teach that to people in your church. And so if you're going to be like Jesus, then you, and you're following Jesus' strategy, you're going to go and you're going to select your 12. And like Jesus, he selected his 12. I think it's in the Gospel of Luke you read, after a night of prayer. Jesus is going to be involved in the selection of your 12, and he's going to show you who they are. And then once you have your 12, you've got to start rolling up your sleeves, and you've got to, you, you've got to get stuck in with the work of forming their character. And, and how do you know when their character is formed? Is when they exhibit the fruit of the Spirit in Galatians 5. You know, a person either has the fruit of the flesh or the fruit of the Spirit. If, if the character of Christ is formed in your disciples, they will have the fruit of the Spirit. The fruit of the Spirit will define their character. And then once you form them, and once they look like Jesus, because this is the, the key issue, once they look like Jesus, you now send them. And they go and they launch a cell group. And so, that is the strategy of Jesus. Find 12 disciples, form their character, and send them out. And when you send them out, what do you send them out to do? You send them out to go and find 12 disciples. Form them. Send them out. And that's how things go down through the generations. All right, now, I just want to whet your appetite for season two. So you, you've got, imagine this, imagine if you do the vision properly. You've got yourself, you have 12 disciples, you form them. They each get 12 disciples. You've got 144 disciples under your 12. And they, they're disciples of yours. And because you're following Jesus, they're disciples of Jesus. And just like they submit to you, you also submit it to someone. Now imagine if the people at the 144 level each have 12 disciples. You know that that turns out to be 1,728. So you have 1,728, and they are submitted to 144 who submitted to 12 who submitted to you. Now, that's not a quick thing to do. That's not a quick thing to do. To get to that place, first of all, you're going to have to change. I promise you now, and I'm talking from experience, you're going to have to change. When you start building disciples using the strategy of Jesus, you start realizing where you should fall short. You start realizing where you need additional things in your life. And it becomes a real blessing to know because you know what to go to the Lord with in prayer. You know what needs to change. But I also want you to realize that if you're going to be successful with a vision of God, then you need to learn how to cast vision. And if you know how to do the vision but you don't know how to cast vision, there's going to be a problem. And I'm going to, I'm going to talk about that next week. Now, what I want to say to you, if you want to know more and you want to understand the G12 vision, um, you can understand the, the structure if you look at season two. But the, 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 the G12 vision will only work in your life if you have relationships. Trust me, I've seen many pastors have tried the G12 vision without having a relationship with a pastor, someone who pastors them. And every pastor needs a pastor. So if you want to get involved with G12 vision, we can help you. Just email us at g12.activechurch.org. It's g12.activechurch.org. We'd love to help you. I mean, and so think about this. The, the, the church vision that will change the world. And the church vision is the vision of Jesus. And you can see, you built 12. You teach them to have 12. They, then it's 144. You teach, you know, your 12 teaches them to have 12. And then there's 1,728. Do you know that if you're 1728, each has 12 disciples? That's 20,756. So, first level 12, second 144, third level 1,728, and the fourth level, fourth generation down, each one's a generation. The fourth generation down, 20,756. By the way, if the 20,000 each is 12, it's, 200, it's over 200,000. And if the 200,000 level has 12, that's 2 million. And if the 2 million is 12, you're talking about over 20 million. 
you can see how this can cause multiplication, but it's a long road. It's not, there's no shortcut to this because you've got to form people, and people don't form in, the, in a day. People don't even form in six months. People don't even form in a year. This takes years. But I'm telling you now, if you start doing that now, you will change the world. Amen? Let me pray for you. Father, I pray for every ministry and every person that has been watching the show. I pray that your powerful hand will be upon them, that you'd bless them as only you can, and that they'd go from strength to strength. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you. I'll see you next time.